All right. Good afternoon slash evening Saturday. How's everybody doing this fine Saturday evening? Uh, I don't know. Here in the state of PA, we've been getting some really crappy weather the past week. Um, it just really sucks because warm we, enough tonight. we haven't had much sun. Are you really warm? It's so warm in here. It's not true. Today's the uh, first day we've be. gotten sun in a long time in blue sky, and it's it's really nice. Um, so get out there and enjoy the uh, the day and what's left of sunlight. Um, enjoy it. So anyway, what I have here on the turntable is one of my acquisitions from last week. Um, I finally cracked it open and here it is on the turntable to get a better look at it. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I was on the fence of whether or not I wanted to crack open the uh, 67 Chevelle that I received, but I uh, I will do that one. I'm just going to do it um, maybe either tomorrow or earlier in the week, next week. Uh, but what I have up here is a 69 Dodge Charger Daytona. And this is from... It's a green light, and it's from the uh, 50th anniversary of Barrett Jackson, which was established in 1971. And this car sold at no reserve for 236500 yeah, back in Scottsdale in 2021. No. There was less than 599 Daytonas built. This car was one of the 385, 440 Magnum powered cars produced for U.S. Straight from the National <clears throat> Great Britain. The 69 Dodge Charger Daytona is powered by a 440 no, 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 Magnum, no, 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 375 no. horsepower engine. Paired with the famous Chrysler Torque, no, 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 uh, Torque Flight heavy duty three speed automatic transmission, which delivers a power of the Chrysler's eight three quarter axle with the A36 performance package Thanks that includes place. a 355 axle ratio, sure grip differential, and power steering cooler. The A11-A36 special model XX29 was ordered in spring green with the aerodynamic package, which includes a unique front nose, special windshield moldings, fender mounted vents, and a rear mounted spoiler finished in white to match the Daytona Stripe. thinking I'd be turning Led Zeppelin down, but here I am turning Led Zeppelin down. The volume, that is, not turning them down. You know, I'm not in a position to turn any band down. <laughs> Alright, so this is the uh, 69 Dodge Charger Daytona, and it's in spring green. I had called it Sassy Grass Green, and um, I was evidently wrong that it's spring green it's still a cool color so I have a couple different variations of the Dodge Daytona I have two M2's uh, a Johnny Lightning that's part of the uh, psychedelic 60's and 70's set which comes with a Camaro and uh now this one, the green light. So I'm gonna have to crack open some M2s that I haven't cracked open yet. And they're, they're older castings, which I'm kind of on the fence with. Um, they look great in, in, in the blister packs, but I'm just afraid to take them out and have something ultimately get ruined on them. It's like I said, they look great in the blister pack. 
I, I don't want to ruin that image I have of him if something isn't working right or working properly because uh, the one Dodge Daytona that I have is a Mopar and it's it's got opening features. I think it's a, uh, a 2008 casting, if I'm not mistaken, which is why I really don't want to crack it open because uh, it is an older one. But um, I know eventually everything is going to wind up in acrylic cases hanging up on the wall. Um, but I don't want to crack anything open until it's going to be moved over into an acrylic case because I just, I don't know. I guess I'm just weird that way. Uh, but anyway, to get back to this. This is the green light Dodge Daytona from the 50th anniversary of Barrett Jackson, which was established in 1971. Um, so I did do two quick videos yesterday. Some of you have seen and, uh, One of my friends, Mark, had a question on uh, the gray fighter uh, Lamborghini video, what happened to the other video, which I was trying to post another video from uh, ACDC's Highway to Hell, but unfortunately, um, with not just a copyright claim, um, I also was not allowed to play it because... Uh, I guess ACDC doesn't want anybody playing their their music. Um, how it winds up on YouTube to be played is beyond me. Um, I'm, I'm really perplexed by that. But anyway, I redid the video thinking maybe I'll just use a different version of Highway to Hell. It doesn't matter. Um, so I just bagged the whole idea with using ACDC, so I took a copyright claim hit on uh, Van Halen's Panama. So I have uh, the black Lamborghini uh, Huracan version one um, back up on video, unless uh, YouTube was kind enough to uh, pull it down. Whatever. All right, so up next I have this uh, 2020 Jeep Gladiator. All right, I'm going to move Memphis out here, and I'm going to take the Daytona off and put this 2020 Gladiator up. I've been getting quite a few green light Gladiators lately. Um, I've always been since i started collecting just about a year ago this time i've been a huge fan of green light jeeps um i i really like what they do with their castings and uh it's small details that make their their jeeps in my opinion better than auto world um auto world makes a a, a cool looking casting for a Jeep on the outside, but when you look in the windows, there's no, um, there's no roll cage. And I, I honestly, I don't like that. And, uh, so for that reason and that reason alone, I'm not a big fan of, uh, the auto world Jeeps. Like I said, they make them look nice on the inside, but they skip on the detail on the inside. Um, they have a hood that opens up to a plastic cover over the engine. I really don't care to see that. It just it doesn't mean anything. I'd rather have the roof be able to come off or the freedom panels. This one does have a tonneau cover that, that you can take off. And I have another Jeep. I think it's uh, um, Jeep Law that I received uh, that also has a tonneau cover that can be removed. Um, but I got quite a few different variations of the Gladiator now, and this is one that I picked up from Hobby Lobby last week, and it was in my cart um, on 3000toys.com, so I, I saved a couple bucks by getting it at Hobby Lobby.
So this is it with the uh, Airstream Land Yacht Safari. And it, it is a great combination. Um, I, I'm gonna have to zoom out a little. I guess at some point I'm eventually gonna have to invest in a bigger turntable. Uh, there's just no way I could even hook this thing up and have it jackknifed because it still wouldn't fit on the turntable right. But I think the trailer that they chose for the Gladiator, it couldn't have been a better choice. It is just perfect for the Gladiator. Um, so there we have it and this is also a green light um, I know uh, our good friend Mike Dyson wheels as I call him uh, inquired about whether or not what, what the brand was and I I did respond back to him but uh, just for other people that may have inquired or had thoughts of questioning about it it is a green light <clears throat> Alright, so now I'm going to show this weekend's acquisition. Um, what I just received today, actually. Oh, there goes the tonic cover. That is so cool that Greenlight does that. Alright. So, two of the things that I'm going to show. Um, I actually wanted to do a teaser for them. But, I'm just going to show them, show them on video here. I am going to take them out of the blister, um, and they've been in the blister since uh, 2001, and they're Johnny Lightnings, um, and I'll show what they are in a minute, but um, for any of you who know uh, from like earlier videos when I first started doing this about a year ago, around the same time I started collecting, um, I have a model that Ireland, my daughter, my younger daughter and I have been uh, working on sporadically, and it's Mel's Diner from American Graffiti. And I'm going to use that as uh, a backdrop or a display for some of the cars that I get. Um, so I can switch it up between doing the turntable and having some... Uh, Maybe I'll do like uh, Wolfman Jack and uh, 50s style, 60s style music in, in the background, or 50s era, 60s era uh, music. Uh, I think that would be cool because they actually did have Wolfman Jack um, throughout the whole movie in American Graffiti playing uh, music. It, it was just such a great movie. If you have not seen the movie, I highly recommend it. It's called American Graffiti and it's a George Lucas flick. It was uh, what life was like back in 1962 for people that were just graduating um, or some people that uh, were thinking about their next move after graduation or just a couple of years out of high school. <coughs> if I'm not mistaken, that is uh, one of Harrison Ford's first movies. But I will show those two things in a minute. But what I have up first here is a uh, So This Happened. And for any of you who do not know what that is, that is basically like when I order stuff, I usually just order things at random, never meaning for anything to be shipped together. Uh, like, for example, say I order... Um, 
a Camaro on on Saturday afternoon, and then I order a Chevelle on that following Tuesday. Well, what nine times out of ten, what happens is I wind up getting that Chevelle and that Camaro on the same day. It never fails. So no matter when I order them, they always come together. So I call that a so this happened. And that is what I have here, a so this happened. And this is what I'll show first. This is a 1969 Chevrolet Camaro, and it's Mr. Bardall. This is a hobby exclusive, and this is from Greenlight. Um, I guess Mr. Bardall is uh, famous for his, his uh, artwork and his paint schemes on Camaros um, or in cars in general. I've only seen two examples, this being one of them and another one, which is also a green light. It's another version of a, uh, a Bardall uh, paint scheme, but it's, an, it's another Camaro. But here we have Mr. Bardall, the 1967 Camaro. It's a wicked looking paint scheme he's got going on. I'm assuming that that's what this is all about. I should have done a little research before showing this. Uh, my apologies. How cool is that? Next up. I have this 1970 Chevelle SS in primer. This is from Greenlight Muscle. I think this is a, it's a 2016. And this is also a green light, if I didn't say that already. All right, I may have to move this in order to show what's up next. do I show first? Alright, I'll show a set that's from the beginning of the movie. And there's actually a uh, bit of a diorama going on here. And the picture that they use is Mel's Diner. So what we have is Richard Dreyfus, Ron Howard, and the actor that played John Milner, um, that that had the uh, the yellow coupe, and Ron Howard had the uh, the Impala, I believe that's what it was. Fifty-eight Chevy Impala, yes. And Milner's car is a thirty-seven Ford coupe or a thirty-two Ford coupe. But anyway, it has three of the uh, main characters in 164th scale, and it has both uh, John Milner's coupe and Ron Howard's Ford Impala, or excuse me, Chevy Impala, a Ford Impala, come on now. How cool is that? And just so any of you who may shop on eBay, just know that um, what the prices that you are seeing on eBay is not what I paid. Um, <coughs> I, I'm not crazy. Um, however, these were some pieces that I wanted because they would fit perfectly with the diorama that uh, Ireland and I are building of the uh, Mel's Diner, in which you, you can actually see that in the background there, which is really cool. Because this was one of the opening scenes in the movie. 
Richard Dreyfus is there in the flannel shirt. Uh, John Milner. That's his his name in the movie, John Milner. I don't know what the actor's name is. Um, he's the one with the uh, white T-shirt and Ron Howard there with the purple shirt leaning up against his Impala. So cool. And this is the one I just received today. I wanted to wait until I received both of them before I showed them. Um, so what we have here is Cowboys 55 Chevy Bel Air. I think it's a 55. It's a 55 custom here. Yeah. So what we have here is Cowboys, and that was Harrison Ford who drove that car. And this is the race on, uh, that were there, that's what it says right there, um, racing on Paradise Road. And there's Toad, um, who is the guy that is uh, getting the, turns the flashlight on to give him the go ahead. And uh, the girl that Toad drove around all night in Ron Howard's Impala. I like that hairdo. That is such a classic 60s look. And there's Ron Howard again. This time he's running instead of leaning up against the car. I wonder if it's the same. No, nope. they got two different positions of them. But yeah, I had to get the uh, the coupe twice in order to get the 55 Custom Chevy and the uh, the 58 Chevy Impala. So it's all right; it was worth it to me. Um, this these cars are just too cool not for not for to have in, in the uh, in the diorama so now I'm really looking forward to getting that finished how cool is that so yes I will be opening this but I will save it because I don't want to ruin the uh, card art um, I never trash any of them if I don't have to Cruising at Mel's Diner. That's so cool how they have Ron Howard leaning up against the Impala. I dig it. I think this movie came out in 73 or 74. Shortly before Richard Dreyfuss uh, went over to with George Lucas to, uh, or not George Lucas, Steven Spielberg to film Jaws. So there wasn't much of a time lapse he had between doing this movie and Jaws. And only a few short years later, Harrison Ford went on to be Han Solo in Star Wars. I can't wait to place these cars in the uh, diorama. It's going to look so cool. I'm going to get some LED lights for it as well. I have a little bit of drilling to do to get the LED lights to poke through underneath the uh, dome where all the cars park. All right. So that's what I have today on tap for my latest acquisitions and cars that I said I was going to crack open for you guys to get a better look at. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I'm Rick. You've been watching a whole lot of Zep Diecast channel. I 
would just like to say until the next time, you guys stay safe and healthy and look after one another. And I will catch you on my next video. Peace.